Matheny, one of the founders of Passerby, and this is part four of our interview with Elizabeth Mihalich. And in this portion of the interview, she's going to tell us about uh, a lesson that she learned um, in the context of filmmaking or producing. All right. Uh, number one lesson, sound is really important, uh, which I think probably every filmmaker finds out somewhere along the line. Uh, when we filmed just like the movies, uh, our sound guy dropped out like the night before, but sent his normal like sound mixer guy, and we forgot to get room tone. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, which created a lot of trouble uh, in, with editing later. Um, so I think I knew sound was important, but I didn't realize how much, just because we did have to go back in and ADR a few things, um, but it never really quite came out that perfectly. So I think I would spend more money on a sound editor and a sound team. Uh, I think that's really important now. Um, and I think I also learned in one of our 48-hour uh, filmmaking contests, because we did two, um, don't let anyone push you around, really. Um, because we had two guys that we had hired for our second 48-hour film, and one was an editor and one was a sound person, and they worked professionally in the business in Las Vegas, and we tried to tell them, listen, like this is what happened to us last year. We ran out of time. And we almost didn't make it in. We want a rough cut of the film Sunday morning at like 8 o'clock on disc. I don't even care if it's bad or whatever. It's not what we want. We want that done. And they didn't do it. And over and over again, they kind of said to us, like, we're professionals and we work in the industry and we know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. And we were just kind of like, okay. And so we kind of stepped back and said, fine, they know what they're doing. And then one guy, he was – the editor was editing on Avid, and the sound guy was doing stuff on Final Cut, I think. And then when they tried to put them together, it took way longer than they thought it was going to, and we didn't get our film in on time. But they're professionals. But they're professionals. They knew. And so I learned really to kind of stand my ground and stay in my power even though I'm, I'm learning. You have to kind of figure out who you can learn from and who really just has an ego. And in that situation, we should have stood our ground and said, this is what we want. Yeah, um, that, that's a great story. I think collaboration, it, so often it's driven by um, that humility in, in, a lot of, in a lot of cases. And like, I think the wrong people to have on your team are the people that think they don't have anything to learn. They, they haven't yeah. figured out. I think that makes for bad teams. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cool. Well, that, that's a great story. Um, and so you didn't end up having, uh, you didn't get the submission in? We got way. it in, but it was it was only 15 minutes late. Uh, we drove as fast as we could <laughs> across town <laughs> to turn it in at the Palms, I think, in Vegas. Uh, so it got to screen, but it didn't get to be a part of the competition. I and know. it was really good. It was um, a really solid story, and everything looked good, and... I thought we had a really strong chance of winning some awards that year, and so I was a little bit disappointed. But do you think you'll do 48 Hour uh, again in the future at any point? Um, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it does get you to get things done. Right. <laughs> so possibly. I mean, I definitely have a better team of people now that I can call on that would be, I think, really fun to do. I know more people now, so it wouldn't be like we were – you know, the first one we hired our cinematographer like off a message board on the 48-hour film thing for Las Vegas. And right. he was all right. Um, but now I feel like I know more people who cool. have their own equipment. Yeah. And well, it seems like it, it'd be very important to have uh, cross-functional teams, like people that have been in multiple roles. And since you're one of those people, that I'm sure that's helpful. Yeah, it is really helpful. The more that people can do and the more that they're willing to do, you know, all, all is better, I think. Absolutely. So, so what's next for you? What's, uh, what's the next thing that you really want to work on or devote time to after tactics? Um, I haven't been writing for a while, so I want to really like get back in and have all these ideas that have sort of flown in or that have cropped up that I'd like to sit down and flesh out. I have like two or three scripts that are started um, and different things. So I think I'd like to take some time and really do that. Um, and then one of my other scripts, 
uh, tagalongs, the Girl Scout script. A producer requested to see it recently, so I'm hoping something will move with that. Because um, that is a, it's a high concept. Um, it's really funny, like family friendly, all girl cast movie for girls that are, they're like eight to ten year old girls. Awesome. I'd like awesome. to see something happen. A lot of that. commercial appeal, I would think. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, very cool. Well, Elizabeth, thank you so much for doing this. And thank you, and thank you for being so supportive uh, uh, with Passerby and the crowdfunding and everything. It's been really awesome. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. We, you know, we love you. So, um, uh, okay, uh, I've ended everyone extremely abruptly, and I'll end this one the same way. Uh, thanks a lot for your time, and I'm sure I I'm going to talk to you very soon. Okay, great. Thank you.